Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I'm just going to do a build, some builds. Uh, we have three bruiser artifact weapons coming out and I figured I'd throw in some flavor. Maybe you're curious to see something that like operates around the weapon specifically, makes it an elevated build. Uh, there's a certain one, obviously the abyss doesn't have a lot of what I'm going to be working with. So we're going to be having pieces in there that kind of don't make sense. But then you'll see, you'll see what the cook is. And then if you like the cook, so I'll have time steps for them. If you're curious about a specific weapon itself, and then you can see what's up with that. I'll do a brief overview for it and like what I'm planning on doing. And then we can go into the nitty gritty. If you want to continue watching it from there, uh, basically this is what we're going to be operating with. Uh, it's bruiser builds. So you're a typical 300, 200 setup that we have right now. <clears throat> And then I just did the math for the expansion to see what points we'd get. The new food gives you plus eight. So now we're gonna have 610 points total, which means if we have our basic package of 300, 200, you'll get two 50 point thresholds you can play with, or you can get the new 350 point thresholds with, with one 50 point threshold, I think. Hang on, let me... Ba -ba -bum. Duplicate this quick. Let me go to tables. I can just at least show you. Okay, so usually right now we either as a bruiser. So this is like the medium bruiser, right? This is what I play. It's what I'm most familiar with. What I'm most comfortable like talking about <clears throat> is you're at your 300 strength option and your or your 300 con option. And then you just go 200 for the stat you're not going 300 in, right? So now you have a new 350 con stat which is going to be really good for bruisers. I think this is going to be static. You should probably think about just doing this. And then that's going to leave you one 50 point threshold or two 25 point thresholds for something else. Unless you want to go 250 into strength to get the stamina regen back while performing basic melee attacks, which might work with uh, the great sword. We'll see. We will find out when the expansion comes out. Okay. This is just a flavor build. This is it's going to be the builds for these weapons. I'm not saying you should do this. This is going to be OP or broken. I'm just going to show you. And if you like it, you like it. And if you don't, you don't. It's fine. But uh, we have new 25 stat thresholds now because of this. So you can get a dex for a chance. And then you can either get this if you want. Damage increase to backstab and random critical hits. Or you can get a flat 5% cooldown reduction. Or you can index into 50 or something like this. So like great swords can get bleeds and dots. You can get more damage out of that if you want. It really depends. I'm not going to tell you which way to go. I'm just going to show you the builds for these weapons to elevate these weapons. But that said, we're going to hop in to our first one. <clears throat> Spark of Molinear. 99% of the damage converts to lightning. You deal 20% more lightning damage to both weapons. That means that when this weapon is sheathed, you sw swap it over to your second weapon. It's going to do 20% more lightning damage. So we need weapons that do lightning damage, right? <clears throat> Drop some Chartus and Lazarus last boss so it's good to farm it's easy to farm you can just keep pumping la uh, laz all you want and then get this hammer and now you're gonna need a weapon to complement it i found a few that work uh obviously anything with like shirking lightning is going to be good so it's kind of like up to you what you want but there are some items that come with it so if you want a great sword option you just have to deal with trenchant ren which is fine it operates anyways well with the great sword and then you have your shirking lightning and then this drops from one of the bosses in the beast the new beast expedition we'll be getting when the expansion launches but it comes equipped with shirking lightning anyways which is good so you'll get that oops e -e 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 -e. oops our next one's going to be the deep river great sword also comes with shirking lightning but you can now have a little bit of customization on what kind of perks you want instead of it being a named legendary item. You can get your Keenan power. It does operate with dex, which is fine because you can use the dex 50 point threshold if you want. But if that's the option you want to go for, then this is a perfect great sword for you because it has lightning on it and it will get massively buffed. <coughs> well, there's another attribute squad. And then if you want a blunderbuss hammer option, so the hammer BBs, but you want to use Molnir and you need lightning, perfect. Here is a named blunderbuss with lightning. The only issue is, is you have to opt in with the 38 intelligence, which means you can get this technically if you want. 
because obviously you're gonna get 38 you're gonna pass this and you're gonna be like 12 away from this so you might as well just index to get this anyways but that is an option to have and it gives you the shrinking lightning obviously you can get a strength one that follows these perks to get shuriken lightning and then avoid this entirely but this is a named item that you can find you can farm it's dropped by this in the in the beast exp uh, expedition so like i said you can just get started on the build early like i said clearly this is not the build for this weapon i'm just showing you named items that are dropping now new named items because they go up to 700 that you can get that has the perks you're kind of looking for to complement this weapon so that's what we're going for here that's the thought process <clears throat> hollow trunk it's another named item you get a random perk shuriken lightning most of these are going to have shuriken lightning or lightning in general uh this is dropped by a lot of people as you can tell it's kind of like an open open garden of genesis drop so you can find one here it's fine and then now we're going to move into the gear so you have your lightning hammer you have your lightning weapon of choice now you need lightning gear right and what a perfect place to get lightning gear than to get ariate's golden armor so for bruisers as of right now so we're thinking about what we have currently the best setup for a medium bruiser is your heavy helm heavy chest medium gloves boots light pants because that's the maximum armor threshold you can get You're still a medium and you get to operate two heavy pieces so i found two heavy pieces that give you lightning damage plus two which is fine it does have the elemental version and you will get the random perk but this gets farmed by general crassus so you can farm that one comes with magnify i tried to make sure i picked pieces that had magnify their weapon ones are kind of like if you want to operate with that, I couldn't find weapons currently that were named items that you could farm and I could tell you where to get them that didn't have like corresponding, you know, strength decks, con perks on it that you could utilize with lightning. So this is kind of just what you get for a lightning build, right? <clears throat> Next one's obviously the chest piece because it's a heavy. You still will get elemental adversion. Also drop some crasses. So very easy for you to farm. You get both those pieces. Now, these are kind of the only ones that have lightning harnessing on named items, I think. Yeah, well, no, the whole... So, yeah, we will go to Deep River next. Deep River, you'll get Thrust Condition. I know a lot of these have perks that you might not find ideal. And I agree. I mean, I wouldn't choose to run around with Thrust Conditioning on my gear just to, as a perk when there are clearly better perks out there. But you're going to get another one. Anyways, so now you're just going to have 8% damage or absorption from those. And then you have elemental aversion, which is going to get you 8.4 from range and elemental attacks. So you can still customize your gems. You're not going to be fully efficient because you're focusing on trying to up and utilize lightning damage anyways. So that's kind of the concession you're going to take as you need to work around some of these perks you're going to get from the gear, which is still possible. I know there's a lot of people that go out there and run the numbers and like, oh, this is like 98% effective versus something else that's 100% effective. That's true, but that's not the purpose of this build. This build is to harness the lightning from the spark. Do as much lightning damage as possible. And these are named items that come with lightning damage. That's what I'm showcasing. So you kind of understand where that's going. This isn't your stick, then you just move along, you know? If you're looking for the most optimal 100% go to the sauce you're gonna play like a robot so you can get 100 uptime for all the stats and buffs on your gear then there's clearly videos for that this is you want to play spark of lightning and you want to pump lightning damage this is for you so okay that <clears throat> we'll move on some lord's kilt uh i couldn't find pants that gave you lightning damage so i tried to give you something that was relatively good which is the reduced match cooldown, which is fine. Grit Ward, if you're going to be operating Grit, also going to be fine. And then you can mess with it. So you're going to have four pieces that will give you lightning damage. I, there, I guarantee you there's a light pant somewhere that gives you lightning harnessing as well. Obviously, you can find a piece of custom gear that drops that has lightning harnessing and then gets you the perks you want. I couldn't find anything. So this is just a fill. You don't need this one, clearly. 
then you have your boots. There you go. So now you're looking at, you know, what is that? Four times two, 8% extra lightning damage. And then obviously the rune glass for gems, if you want to, for the uh, weapons to get the uh, extra, the extra 10%. So now you just have 10% flat uh, lightning damage, whatnot. And we're shocking people. You're going to do amazing damage with that. Cause you got to think about it. All your damage now is coming as lightning for the most part, other than your second weapon. You're only going to do 20% more lightning damage with both weapons, right? And so your secondary weapon is going to be doing its physical normal damage, but this is just going to be pure 100% 90, pure lightning, which means not all the people spec into lightning right now. They will eventually. Once the Mjolnir start coming out, people are going to start putting lightning in their resistance in their gear. So this damage is going to drop eventually. But if you can get ahead of the ball game before that happens and get this kind of set up, you're going to be spiking fools. So, get ahead of the game. <clears throat> that said, there's this n ring that I found that's obviously good because it has lightning damage, as leeching, and you get keen. I mean, obviously not the perks you probably want, but it's a good ring that's named. You can farm it. Uh, I think it's a, it's a Lazarus Unique Expedition Replica. So, I think you can actually craft this to 700 if I'm reading that correctly which I'm 90% sure you can. So you can get this lightning damage. Name dream, that's something you want to do. Now you got extra lightning damage, right? Boom. Uh, I picked this one just because I like this. Healing heart on heart rune heal for 10% of your max health. I'm assuming if you're going to be running like a hammer build of some form, you're either going stone form or maybe grasping roots, or you might try the new one out. It really depends. But I was assuming that you're going to try stone form and so that would that would give that'd be a decent perk for you to have nimble is going to be good for the great sword and then whatever your random perk is going to be for this uh there, clearly there is an earring that gives you like lightning damage of some form but obviously there's going to be better perks i try to like stay away from that it's very clear which better perks are going to be but i thought this was interesting to have and it synergizes pretty well with the build because once you have stone form you can get your free heals off all that business. <clears throat> As you can see, we're making it synergistic here. You have your hardy for the great sword and for dodging as well. And then you have pure fine heart. Lose all your debuffs. So once you activate the stone form or the vines or whatever, they only get healed for ten percent, but you lose all your debuffs as well. So it's like a free cleanse on your on your heart rune ability. That's the only reason I have that other one there, is because it synergizes with this item as well <clears throat> and then i'm assuming these perks aren't going to stack but if they do that's going to be bonkers so uh if it doesn't then obviously this is going to be a good one because it's a guaranteed uh quest reward from the new expansion quest so you will already have this perk here if that's what you're kind of looking for with the potion cooldown and refreshing as well which is nice so there's nothing really to worry about there but there's this one as well. I like this one because of the activations it has on it. I'm kind of a player that is not trying to sit there and focus on 14 million things. And so if I have conditions that get met and activates things, I like it. So I personally like this because 50%, oops, my bad. 50%, 50%, I get 24 to fight and I get all my cooldowns reset, which I think is good. I like this. This is a nice amulet to have. I personally might use this myself. So <clears throat> these are just options. Azov battery, I think is going to be a popular one. I think it's a lot of people I've seen talk about it. You have your health, you have your alchemist improves the healing from the potions, and then your random perk you're probably going to run with either whatever you choose. I think this is going to be a pretty popular amulet. I think. Okay, so it's dropped out in Brimstone. So yeah. You're gonna want this. I think that's it for the Mjolnir. So the Mjolnir, the point I was trying to focus on was amplifying the electricity damage and then synergizing the electricity damage. And then after that, it's kind of like a a hunt for CDR and sustain and defense type situation. So did I, should I do a skill builder for this? Cause you're using the spark, right? Should I do that? Let's do that. 
So for Warhammer, what would I do? If you're obviously going to use the Warhammer as an ability, let's see. Ba -ba -da -bum. So you're going to run with that. Shockwave's almost entirely given. It's just that good of ability. So now your options are going to be, are you going to be a DPS threat with the hammer? Then you're probably going to pop this. And this. All the way to the bottom for that one. This is kind of meh. Because you're going to have grit anyways. So it just depends if you want to get the rend on the target. And this increased damage. If you don't care about this, don't spec into this. Right? And now we're, now we're looking at how to get to this bottom tree. This is kind of whatever. It's basic attacks, not abilities. Heavy attacks is fine. This is obviously going to be great just for all your abilities. Don't need that because you already have grit. Don't need that. Can't use that. Can't use that. So now we're like kind of stuck anyways. You're kind of forced either. I mean, this is going to be fine just for the fact. Like so. And then so. Okay, it's perfect. Because that way, like I said, if you don't want this rend, for some reason you don't want this rend, don't take this ability to get this rend. And then you definitely don't need this. Unless you really want to, that's fine. What we're trying to, what we're going to be thinking about is trying to cycle the abilities with the heavy attacks. Have this pump down, and then you have armor breaker anyways. So that's good. And then you have shockwave. You can get a sundering shockwave on one of your perks. So now you have rend anyways. And then what are we doing here? Ba -ba 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 Boom! Nope. Can do this one. Debuffs, it's fine if you want to opt in to get in the rend. Heal when using the crowd crusher ability. That depends. Shockwave doesn't really do that much. It's the path of destiny with Leech Path of Destiny that's kind of the important one. So now what we're looking at. Probably this. And then we have extra points. So there's literally no reason not to take those two. So there. Now you have it. As like a kind of a DPS situation. I think if you're gonna run Path of Destiny or clear out for this, obviously you're gonna index into a lot of these and you're not gonna worry about any of this. But I think this is a decent look for a hammer DPS build. I'm not familiar, I don't play a lot of hammer DPS. I'm usually running, you know, Path of Destiny, Shockwave, Wrecking Ball, or Armor Breaker. Because that's like the typical bruiser setup anyways. You only really run this if you're actually trying to do damage with the hammer. Which you can now because of Molnir, right? <clears throat> so that's that. That's for Molnir. 18 minutes. It's gonna be a long video. If you're gonna watch the next one, that's fine. But like I said, there's gonna be timestamps for those. And then with that, we are going to exit these out. <clears throat> and now we're gonna be starting with the Abyss. So he came from the Molnir. You kind of understand where we're going for, but if you're coming here from the timestamp. I'm basically trying to elevate these perks the best I can. So we're looking for items that increase void damage, right? Because most of this is going to convert to void damage and do more damage with mana, right? So we need to find a way to utilize mana as well. Uh, there are options that I have that I set up. Hang on. Let me... I thought I set up Abyss Weapons. I didn't. That's fine. Because I didn't really get a completed set with the Abyss. Because like I'm just operating on whatever on the database we have right now. There's going to be items that are going to come out that might complete this even further. But for the moment, the Abyss is probably just going to be your standard bruiser setup. Unless you want to incorporate some of these items into it as well. But that... <clears throat> uh, there wasn't much of a helm situation with uh, Void Harnessing. So I have an elemental adversion helmet that you can get picked up, dropped in Eden Grove. <laughs> and then the Azog Crystal Helm, I think is probably going to be the one you want to pick with the Abyss, just for refreshing and enchanted ward. Obviously, if you want to min max, you don't have to get this, but I think this is just like a decent, I like this one. Personally, I like this one. There's that. And obviously the wood green version and the Azov chest plate. 
Speaking of, these are contingent on... <clears throat> these are contingent on you having either this or... Where is it? So, what I'm saying is, if you go with the Unyielding Helmet for the Free Resilient, then obviously you're going to be looking for either this chest piece or this breastplate, is what I'm telling you the situation. Because now you have that. Obviously, if you found a chest piece with Shirking Fort, synergize with this, that's good. And then Dark Plate, you get Enchanted Ward and Physical Aversion, but you're looking for this, which is good. It's going to make it more tanky, it's going to make it more fun. And then you'd probably pick up this one just for the extra enchanted ward, right? So this is contingent on you picking whatever one you pick here. Your gear will go here. Okay. That's what you're kind of looking out for. I think at the moment until we actually get some gear coming out, you can obviously craft an item that has void harnessing itself with the two perks, but these are just ones you can get now before that happens. Because that stuff's really, really expensive. So, that said, Isabella's gauntlets are kind of going to be really good. Obviously, Isabella's gear gives you Void Harnessing. And most of it is, unfortunately, all medium. Which is fine. That means we can get the gloves and the boots for that. And we get a Chanted Ward. So, it's going to synergize with the Void Dark Plate choice if you choose to do that. And then Unyielding is kind of like left on its own, but you're obviously getting resilient for free, right? So that's the choice you're going to have to make. And obviously the Greaves. <clears throat> and then the Encorruption Ring. You have your Max Stamina. God damn it. You have Magnify. You have your Void Damage. That's so more Void Damage. But at the moment right now, you have 11%-ish Void Damage. And then this is contained in Invasion Crate, so good luck with that. But this is this is a good ring, I think, to have with the Abyss. The Corrupted Progenitor. I like this one because when you're health, you get your cooldowns back, which is great because you can just get another grab if you drop below 50%. And most bruisers that run, most speed and bruisers typically can drop below 50% really totally easily, especially in wars. So if you think about it, if you threw out your grab <laughs> and then you got 50%, you get a second one. So I think this is going to be underrated for the moment until people start utilizing it correctly. Obviously, you got max health. Uh, these are the pants. You do have to deal with the fact that you have thrust conditioning, but as a medium bruiser, that's kind of like not too bad of a situation to have other than it's like the only perk by itself, you know? So but you get your void harnessing or the extra void damage. Basically, finding pieces that have Void Harnessing as a main perk and then getting the two perks, three, two or three perks you want is good. And then depending on what you choose, I would probably synergize with the rest. So if you got Shirking Fort, then I try to craft gear that has Void Harnessing and Shirking Fort. And then if you have Enchanted Ward, I try to get Void Harnessing and uh, Enchanted Ward. And then pray that this can drop. I don't, can it? Yeah, so you have a 2% chance of getting a Void Harnessing Void Play. So, but is it possible? Yes. And then maybe you can re-roll it, and then it's goaded with the sauce, right? Or this one. You know, Shirking for it, refreshing, and then getting Void Harnessing on 2.6%. So, it is possible to get a full Void Harnessing gear if you wanted to with your void damage ring here obviously there's other things that have void damage on it you can also craft a ring that has void damage on it if you don't want to go through invasions but now you know what to look for you want to blow the fuck up with the void damage and just pump void damage that's what this is going to scale off of and then this you will have to pair it with a magic weapon which is i think people aren't realizing because people are like, oh, yeah, this is going to be a great bruiser weapon. This is the best bruiser weapon. People are going to be running the abyss. And I'm like, yeah, but you don't get Warhammer. You don't get Greatsword. You don't get Spear. 
You don't get sword and shield. You have to run. You don't. You don't get blunderbuss either. So you're stuck with void gauntlet, ice gauntlet, fire staff, life staff, in order to get this twenty percent damage. And then you're gonna scale with intelligence versus the spark of Molinier, You're fine. You can go 300, 200. You can customize your stats however you want to. You don't have this to deal with. It's just lightning damage and more lightning damage. Stack the lightning damage. Pump people. But here, if you want to utilize this weapon to its fullest, you cannot go a physical damage secondary weapon unless it uses mana and gets you below 100%. And even then, you have to maintain that to maintain this 20% damage. I don't think this is going to be as prized as people think once they realize what this is and what this means for you. Like, bruisers don't really want this. Like, you're stuck with mana as a secondary weapon, which is fine. That's what you want. But the typical Great Axe Warhammer bruiser thing is still going to be a staple in war. And the only one that could complement that at the moment so far is Molinir with a shirking lightning Great Axe. So, there's that. With that, I think we're mostly done with this one. Relatively short, like I said, there wasn't a lot of items that complemented the Abyss without making it like an actual, you know, PvP setup. And then for the weapons... Actually, we'll spend some time doing that. Let us look... at our weapons here. That spend mana. So you understand, like, what's going on here. So you have a Fire Staff. What are we looking at here? Like you're you're kind of boned a little bit on this. So you can operate an incinerate. Like you have to realize you're running abyss. I think the best option is a void gauntlet itself. And then what we're gonna run with? Orbit decay would be fine. Petrifying Scream inflicts disease would be good. So Draught of Death. Slowing Tether is good because now it doesn't cancel when you swap weapons. And then obviously another Pet Scream. Is there an Oblivion one? This has Empowered Armor Breaker. <laughs> like I said, this is not 100% up to date itself. We hit a target with essence rupture reduce the essence rupture's cooldown by 100 percent that's gonna be good for a lot of people but if you're running abyss it's probably not although this is kind of like your first one you get your healing reduction on your great axe so you can go to town and this drops by who is this i don't know who this is i'll be honest i'm assuming this is a boss in brimstone just by the name there's no comments on it. Okay. Well, it drops from this guy. Forgive me. I'm not a magic player. I don't go hunting for this. And then the Abyss Walker. Flicks is slow. Now it flicks disintegrate every second. I think this is probably the one you're going to want. To be honest. Because Tether. You get Tether. You swap her to your GA. You run them down with Bloodlust. Serving into the Moon Shadow. Well, that's a level 70 B. So that's obviously in Elysian Wilds. I think this is going to be the one. You get Disintegrate as well. And you get the move speed reduction. And then you run them down with Bloodlust with the Abyss Lack. Like this is a decent second bar of Void Gauntlet. You have Intelligence you can scale with. You're good. I think this is probably going to be the one you're going to want to run with. I would personally want to run with this one with the Abyss. So, okay. Yeah, because like Ice Gauntlet, I guess. Let's see. Pylon Burst. I guess. Pylon Burst. Healing Tomb. Might be a good option for like extra sustain and like height ability with the Ice Gauntlet. Maybe might be a good idea. Wind Chill, no. Ice Spike, maybe. Snow Drift, maybe. So like Ice Gauntlet would be a good secondary item to like lock your guy's opponent in place and then wail on him with the GA. That's a good option. 
and then you can have the free heal with the with the healing tomb but that would be okay life staff maybe you have to get focus or it's a useless item anyways and then fire staffs like just extra damage you know you're operating under two elements now well technically you could operate under three elements because you can put a different gem in one of these like a arcane gem or a lightning gem and now you have fire electricity and void you're pretty much the avatar <clears throat> if you really wanted to do that and then you just go full intelligence that way when you -bum. and then that way and if higher will scale from intelligence so that's that but like i said like you have to have a magical weapon with this great axe in order to get the 20 percent more damage for it to be good otherwise it's not so that's that all right final one my personal my personal favorite as you can see this has a lot more tabs than the abyss does but i think the abyss kind of overhyped it's good but i think it might be overhyped i think serenity and mjolnir are probably going to come out kings and everyone thinks this is the pve weapon for some reason which is whatever you may think what you want i'm not here to tell you otherwise uh but obviously the balance blade is why you'd want serenity uh, in Empower Cap, I do have this build structured around not hitting Empower Cap because of the Empower you get from the weapon itself, plus this perk is a lot. If you think about it, you have Offensive Stance, 2% Empower per stack for 5 seconds. That's 20% Empower already from the weapon, and then you can get more from Onslaught and stuff like that. So, I tried to make sure I operated this build around not hitting Empower, so you can not hit Empower Cap and waste your stat. Trenchant Strikes is okay, because you're going to be melee attacking anyways. This is kind of meh, wishwashy, but it's whatever. Refreshing Moves, always going to be good on a Greatsword. CDR and Refreshing Moves, always going to be good on a Greatsword. Don't let anyone tell you differently. What about weapons? Because <clears throat> uh, you're running the great sword, you probably want Grit. And in the Con, and if you go to the 350 Con, you get the 50% flat damage reduction anyways. So that's going to be really good, especially if you want to live in Onslaught Stance. So there's Commanding Strike here, Keenly Jagged. Uh, if you want to go with the... Uh, no, you're not going to go Intelligence on the 50% the 50% threshold. So, But you have that. I think this is a decent one. Named item. Drops from Shireld. Uh, who's this guy? Whose man is this? Is? The Varangian dude. Might be... Might be the, uh... What is it? The Furnace in Great Cleave. Whatever that is. I think that's it. I do not know. We will find out eventually. Actually, we can just click on him. Where are you? Imperium Forge. Okay, I was right. Look at that. I don't need to play the game. <laughs> so... There's that. Sword strikes. Decent. Decent. We have others. Refreshing move and enchanted. That's kind of the staple ones that you kind of run with before. You can't really go wrong with that on a great axe. As well. Drops by a lot of people. Arcane Jolt. No. Battle Axe of the Charted Path. No. These are just transmog options, but not a decent a decent avenue for it. Rogue. So if you want to main bar Serenity for this stack, obviously, for the damage, and then you need to have a good back bar, then obviously this would be decent because you're assuming that you're gonna chase people with the great axe with the with reap, gravity, and uh charge. So this would operate well with this and then you would get keenly jagged on top of it so if this is your back bar weapon for chase then this is a good option for you dropped by a whole bunch of people but also can be crap next you want to go hammer we're really a lot of hammer options i'm just kind of throwing it to the wind i think the spear options are way better as a combination and then we'll get to that when we get to that Life stealing, I just think it's good for the perk on the hammer anyways. It's whatever. Trenchant strikes for the melee if you want. 
I don't really think about it. I don't really like the hammer great axe combo anyways. Some people do, but here you go. There's one you can get. And this is dropped by all the people in the world. Come the expansion. Spears, first one. And feeling screwer, I like this. Reduces the target's damage for 47%. So you have someone that just wants to like ego check you with a with serenity and they just don't understand. You pop this up first, you throw the skewer at him, right? And then I like this because of the thwarting counter. I think it's good if you're gonna be engaging with uh, a great sword as your main bar weapon and you have grit and you're gonna go against somebody else that has grit. I think having the spear have the ability to counter that is really good. Plus the skewer. So not only are you doing more damage to them, they're gonna do 40% less damage to you. And then you're gonna body them with the with the spear. And then when they start running, you hunt them down, right? I think this is a good secondary option. And this drops by Rage of Osiris. Wherever the f that is, I'm sorry. I haven't played in a hot minute. It's like, why am I gonna play a bad game when the good new game's gonna come out soon? I'm not gonna deal with it. I'm sorry. Wherever this is. I'm, I'm thinking this is an open boss in the Elysian Wilds. Yeah, there he is. That's where he drops. Okay, that 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 is Elysian Wilds. That's probably why I didn't know where that was. So you can't nap me for not playing the game, huh? All right. But I think this is gonna be a good spear to pair with Serenity, 100%. This is gonna be dirty. You have a lot of tools in your belt and you have a lot of flexibility to be able to get Serenity's uptime the way you want it. So if you think about it, you have this for eight seconds and then you get this stacked and you might get two or three seconds of just being 200% more powerful than they are until that buff wears out and then you can put this back on, you know? A uh, brace. And I see a lot of people that ran Cyclone, so I put it in here. The Cyclone has a heal. I don't know if that's a good perk or not, but if it is, there it is. And then this gets dropped by Harvester the Glacier. And he's in the Illusion Wilds too, it's what it's looking like. In the northeast corner, where the fort used to be. I think that's where the fort used to be. No, the fort's right there, so above the fort, where the old fort was. And next, Blunderbuss. Huh? I like this because when Claw Shot connects to a target at least 10 meters away, gain 41% in power for the three seconds. So I'm assuming if you're gonna use Claw Shot to hit somebody, they're running away from you and they're low anyways. And so I think this is a nifty thing to burst somebody out with the BB to finish them off, you know? So you come in with the Serenity, you beat them up, they're running away, you Claw Shot them, and then you do the Azoth Shrapnel Blast auto reset combo and kill them, right? So there's that. And then you get your nice little heals out of it. And then this Admiral Black Powder and Black Powder Barnacle, the B&B &B Expedition. <laughs> Soul Shroud. Uh, this is just for the healing option, but it comes with Vorpal as well. So this is if you want to use it for like sustain in a fight. So maybe you guys are just going at it with each other's throats. For some reason you're losing with Serenity, you can swap over and then heal, right? Drop by a shit ton of people, so. <clears throat> This is why I think Serenity is probably going to be king for a while. And people say this as minus 25% damage and 25% lifesteal. And they're like, why? Well, here you go. This nullifies it completely. Now you're just getting extra 25% lifesteal. You're actually getting more than that. You're getting 32% lifesteal from damage with more stamina. Like this is designed for a greatsword. And I know you hate to admit it, but it is. Like, you put these two together instead of the other crappy ones, you're going to be unstoppable in Onslaught stance. You're going to be healing, and it's going to be great. So I, these, I'm going to be pushing for these two. And then this gets dropped by the Reagent. Where the hell? Who is you? This is Lazarus? Starstone Barrows. <sighs> hate that dungeon. All right. Oh, obviously the Serenity drops from the PvP track. You have to be level 20 on the track first before it starts showing up, which is great because I didn't really enter it. 
I didn't really interact with the PvP track anyway, so I'm like 25. <laughs> so I can farm it pretty easily, I'm assuming. We'll see. Uh, the the earring, we've already seen this one before. I like it because of the heart rune synergies it has with other uh, items. And obviously the stamina regenerate. And then this is just another option for an earring because of the refreshing toast. This one you can get immediately from quest rewards, which has CDR, potion cooldown, and the heart rune one that I like, which comes from the quest reward. Passage of Times and Amulet Jewelry. I like it because I like this. And it comes with CDR. You get free stamina. Uh, great Swords utilize stamina. So, but like I said, I like it because I like the stamina recovery situation paired with the Serenity, which uses, which is a great sword, which uses stamina for its attacks. So like having that there is a good little tool. You don't have to think about it. And it comes with refreshing, right? Like I said, there aren't going to be perfect builds for these weapons. It's just to elevate the weapon. And these perks from named items that are freshly dropped are going to do that. Okay. So don't get on me when I'm telling you like, oh, this is good. You'd be like, no, it's not statistically. If I pull up the Microsoft Excel, you know, whatever. These are just options. Uh, this ammo jewelry, I like, I mean, it stays off battery. We've talked about it with the other weapons. This, I think it's just going to be a staple item. You can't go wrong with it. You can't go right with it. It's just there. It's good. You can put it plug and play, forget about it. And it's perfectly okay. <laughs> the amulet as well, because I just like these, uh, whips and mechanics on it. I think it's going to be good. I don't know if this would be good for the great sword just because of the CDs you're able to get up. But if you pair it with the spear and maybe you're not using the spear to get the CDs back up, this might be a good idea. <clears throat> and then obviously I like this one because it has two of them. <laughs> Which better than one is get two. Refreshing recovery for your CDs. Like I said, I don't know if this will be good for a great sword setup, but for the spear, I think it'd be good if it's a back bar spear. You know, you're just getting there to apply the spear debuffs on it or to chase somebody down anyways. And then maybe if your health drops, you can get those CDs back up for more kite or more chase potential. One of those two. And then the free fortify. And then as with anything else with these, you're choosing between one of these two. And then your build wraps around them for the gear you pick up. So the gear you just saw, it wraps around them. Okay. So if you choose unyielding, then you're going to need a chest piece, right? And if you choose the chest piece, you're going to need a helmet. That's crazy. So we have this with refreshing. Uh, you only get four stacks of refreshing. So if you already choose to pick up those two accessories or to have refreshing on them, then you can technically only get two more refreshing before it caps out. So whether you put that in the heavy gear or not is up to you, but they are there. But if you're running with, you know, the helmet, then you're only getting the chest piece. So if you have those two accessories, you have three more. You can put it in your gloves. I think the Azoth Crystal Gloves are going to be really good with a greatsword setup. And then you just opt not to have the uh, refreshing on your accessories, which is a good idea. I think that's fine. Like slashing, leeching would be good. Slashing and leeching would be good. Uh, potion cooldowns, potion buffs of some form would be good. The heart runes would be good. The heart rune uh, perks that I've, that I've shown you already would be good. And then you just wrap yourself around your artifact armor with Azoth crystal here. I think you cannot go wrong with at all. As you can tell, I did give you another option if you wanted. I don't think it's that good, but it's an option you can have. I like this one. It comes with Enchanted Ward, gives you HP if you really want to. There's not a lot of gear here that has the HP you're operating with refreshing at the moment. But if you have gear that wants to operate around this and maintain the Enchanted Ward, this is dropped more spoils. So this might be a little bit harder. You might be better off looking for something that has Enchanted Ward and refreshing as well. So let's see. The so Void. So you have one two, three, and then this would be your fourth for your pants. 
Oh, I have, yeah, there's like plenty of pants actually. I'm, I'm dumb. It's this here. There was only one that I saw. There wasn't an Azoth. They're right here. You nerd. Yeah, so you can go full Azoth crystal. Four piece. Get your refreshing cap. Four chanted wards. And then this random perk. Which can obviously be health. Right? And then there you go. So, if you're running Serenity. And then you're running Bloodsucker. I would... I would think heavily on maybe going with the Azal Crystal set, uh, depending if you, you know, whatever you don't, whatever you pick here, get the four other pieces. Ooh, that's right. You get unyielding, you already have a refreshing. You need to remove one of these. I think that's why I had this. Because, you know, why not? Because your third perks are probably going to be health as well. That's what you're going to try to aim for. And then you'd have health and enchanted ward. So, there's that. Serenity is just going to be a big punch in the face. You want to get these stacks up as quick as possible. So, you're probably going to... What about a bomb? Skill builder. Let's go to great sword. So, you're trying to get these stacks up as fast as possible, right? It's going to be a lot harder, arguably, to get the fortify stacks up. I mean, you're getting hit, so that might be possible. But for the offense stacks, you want to get this up as quick as possible. Get it fully matched out. So you're going to probably operate... You might operate something like this. I was playing around with the build for the Greatsword. And this is kind of what I came up with. Uh, base attack by 15 when they're above 90%, which is usually kind of good. This is kind of okay too, but that's for the longer attack obviously you can do that i'm not telling you which is best it's kind of something i came up with <clears throat> relentless rush and mainly I, I came up with this because i like calamity counter and i like faultless defender if you're able to use this you're going to be superiorly tanky anyways and then you get free run stacks and then the option is picking this up if you want because you're going to get this buff you're going to get this buff you're going to get this buff and I think this counts as a buff and this buff. So you get four buffs, one, two, three, four. So you get this maxed out for base damage. So if you want to go more damage, you get this, which means you're going to lose this and then that's fine. So, but I like this a lot. If you're able to use this correctly, it's really hard for you to die, to be fair really really hard for you to die and then you have this if you time this with this really good so but you have skyward slash it's two attacks relentless rush you can hit people twice if you're good with it and so you can get you know two four stacks there and then you swap people a few times then you're good and then with all the cdr you're gonna get you want to use unrelenting assault this is fine if you want to index, you know, maybe you want to get rid of this and then you want to run with this. You can. It really depends on like how your play style is with the greatsword. And then you can operate with undone defiance, which isn't bad at all, especially if you're going to synergize it with bloodsucker. The only issue is you're arguably going to be losing damage, right? Anyways, so someone that's not running Bloodsucker and is running Serenity is probably going to do more damage to you, but you're probably going to outlast their damage by healing. So, really depends. Um, if you want a more coordinated build, I, I'm i not a build expert. So now we're like entering the end of our video. You're all rallied back up to here. So some thoughts about it. Like these builds aren't designed to be perfect amazing builds they're designed to highlight the weapons passives and utilize them the best you can with the items provided with the database at the moment post expansion i'm sure there's a lot more items that are floating around in the ether that we haven't come in contact with so this isn't 100 final this is like hey this is possible you could get a spark of mjolnir goaded with five out of five gear pieces with lightning damage and then get a ring with lightning damage and then get a secondary weapon with lightning damage and utilize it really well. 
and you can get the abyss with void damage with a magical weapon <laughs> to utilize the 20 percent buff then you have serenity which you can operate around cds life steal or you know uh leeching and then pump out damage you're just a tank in onslaught gear and you're unkillable in defiance with a lot of damage because it doesn't matter what stance you go with in greatsword you're going to end up doing a lot of damage eventually or you can just be really tanky in it forever with a lot of damage so i really like this i'm going to personally run this i think i might run it with that roman disciple spear and then we'll play around with it i think that's gonna be one of my goals when the expansion comes out is try to get those two items and then build out the azoth crystal gear and so i can showcase it actually in its fruition because me just talking about it you're like yeah whatever okay you know you got 92 subscribers bro who cares like me crow out there has got the microsoft excel sheets guy all right who the who the hell are you but give me a chance to cook and let me and let me run around with it and show you how it's done okay give me a chance so that's my goal for this expansion is to get those three items get a build around it see if it actually works and then alter it and make it better see if we can get something cooking that you know all the other mad scientists out there aren't cooking because they're obviously going to be focused on war builds uh group pvp for the influence and whatnot so i want to find something that's like kind of niche something that people probably aren't going to go for and works really well with those weapons so you appreciated that long video there are timestamps, so it might not be a long video for you but those are my final thoughts uh more defined guide once i get the items and test it myself and see what works and what doesn't uh once the expansion comes out i'm excited for it i'll be playing new world once again for a long time until you know whatever at least till the dev update comes at the end of the year for the roadmap thanks for watching guys i appreciate a lot of the people that come through and watched and have said something and you guys like the new world content i try to stay away from the main form content that you're gonna get anywhere else obviously it's hard because there's not really a lot in the game to talk about or play which is why i don't post a lot of videos on things because i don't want to just put garbage out there into the world and just talk about nothing i want to make sure there's something of substance when you come and watch which is why we have notepad sensei and we have new world database as our blanket okay that's what we operate around and then we react to the videos and slightly make fun of people okay that's what we do around here that's what you're interested in come hang out uh streams are gonna be consistent as they always are but when i'm streaming i stream so that's up to that like this is a side gig i play games when i play games i stream when i want to stream i make videos when i want to make videos it's not like my center life so that said i'm done ranting i'll see you guys in the next one bye